Welcome to Today I Learned a Programming Thing, a series where I show small programming tricks that I've learned that make a big difference. Today I learned MySQL has a database that maps its own databases. There is a database in MySQL called Information Schema. An Information Schema will do things like map all the columns that you have. Like all of the columns that you have go into a table in Information Schema uh, called Columns. So let's do this. So let's select, and this is going to be massive. Select a star from Information Schema dot Columns. Just that massive. And it's garbled because uh, it's it's wider than the than the screen, but you can fix that. Here's a bonus. Instead of using the semicolon, you could use backslash capital G. Lowercase G will be the same thing as the semicolon. It'll do this instead. So it'll organize it differently. That's also pretty useful because there are sometimes whenever you have a lot of information and you have too many columns, it's wider than the screen. It doesn't work so well. So. What you can do with things like information schema is you can use something like this. Let's say I want to find all of the tables that have user ID. So, I mean, I could do show tables. Oh, I need to actually select a database. Oh, use database. No, not database. Oh, my gosh. What's wrong with me? Okay, so I could say, uh, what was it? Show tables. And I can, so this is a small database. I've, I've, this is for threads or one of my projects. I haven't really, haven't finished yet. Um, and I can go through all of those tables to see which ones have the user ID. And that's not infeasible in this case because it's only four tables. But what if I've got 40 tables? What if I've got 100 tables? What if I've got 1,000 tables? That would be a big pain. So what I could do is I can select table name and I'm going to go ahead and do column type uh, from information schema and I'm going to go ahead and move my face over here so select table name and column type from information schema columns where column name equals uh, user ID. So now I've got all the tables where I have the user ID, where I have uh, some kind of a user ID column. And you could also show columns from information schema uh, dot columns and you have all the information on there. And also another thing that's really convenient I think, so let's go back to this in addition to showing column type, I should have done this the first time, I can do a column comment. So now I've not only got the table name and the column type, I've got the column comment. That's not even in the uh, show columns, because if I were to do show columns from, let's just say, thread users, it doesn't even include the column comment. So the information schema actually has more information than the regular show columns command. So one thing you might think is why bother with this because you could just go ahead and use something like Toad for MySQL. Well, I'm not going to say Toad for MySQL is bad, it's perfectly fine, but there are advantages to using something like this because this way you can do things programmatically that you otherwise couldn't do. Here's just kind of an example. In one of my previous jobs, we had the database separated into multiple databases. It was like well over over 30 different databases. This is a common thing to do because if you have one da database with just a metric crap ton of data, then it's going to get slow really fast. So what we would do is we would have uh, different clients would go on different databases. That way it wouldn't, uh, they could get their data more quickly and more easily because it wasn't uh, digging through too many other clients' data to get to their data. Most people in development uh, used Toad for MySQL. 
I used it occasionally. It was good. I eventually got to the point where I preferred just to use the command line because it was so much more powerful. But what happened is one person would create a new column for one of those databases. And then they'd commit code to go to the repo that goes to everybody. So if anybody's in a different database, then the code just freaks out and says, I can't find this column. Shut everything down. And so I would, it wouldn't be uncommon for someone to send an email, say, could whoever added this column add it to all the levels, all the databases? Uh, because you couldn't just add it yourself because you didn't know what kind of data type it was going to be. It was going to take a lot of digging to figure it out. I never want to send out those emails. And the reason why is because I could just use this command, this select table name, column type. I didn't really need the column comment in this case. Nobody even commented their columns anyway there, uh, except for me, as far as I know. Um, I could just use that, and I put it into a PowerShell script and ran it on every single level. And one of those levels would return a result. And that way I knew what column type it was. I could take that type, and I could just add it to whatever level I needed it to. Sometimes I just add it to all the levels because everybody needed it. So. so whereas everybody else was sending an email to everybody in development and waiting for someone else to add this column to every level, I would just solve it myself in about 30 seconds, 40 seconds, less than 60 seconds, I know that, because I just have one command, bam, find out where the column is, uh, find out what the data type is, second command, bam, add it to all levels. It was that simple. If you're wondering why I never gave that PowerShell command to anybody else, I did, but nobody else cared. So this is a really, really useful thing. Anytime you can do something programmatically, it's a little bit harder, but it also means you have more flexibility. You can do more things with it. All right.